Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nervise Shashunyabadi Paschachadeshatarine Panchakaupa Terubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadarhar Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to the Nectar of Instruction class for the Bhakti Shastri. And of course, this is particularly this class is for the Bahrain devotees who are taking the Bhakti Shastri. And this is the final unit of the Bhakti Shastri. So I think, I think you'll all be very happy to complete the Bhakti Shastri. Are you, are you managing to keep up everything okay? I hope so. Managed. You managed to do all the essays and memorize all the verses. <laughs> A lot of work. Mm. So there, there are four, four verses for memorization here in this unit. The, fir the first four verses, they're quite well-known verses and I don't think they're very difficult. All right, so we're going to begin. We'll begin with the preface. Oh, is it, does everybody have the text on their screen? Yes, Maharaj, we can see Maharaj here. Okay. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is conducted under the supervision of Srila Rupa Goswami. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas, or Bengali Vaishnavas, are mostly followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of whom the six Goswamis of Vrindavan are direct disciples. Therefore, Naratam Das Thakur has sung, Rupa Raghunatha Pade Hai Beakuti Kabe Hama Bujahabase Yugala Priti. When I am eager to understand the literature given by the Goswamis, then I shall be able to understand the transcendental loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in order to bestow upon human society the benediction of the science of Krishna. The most exalted of all the activities of Lord Krishna are his pastimes of conjugal love with the gopis. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the mood of Srimati Radharani, the best of the gopis. Therefore, to understand the mission of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and follow in his footsteps, one must very seriously follow in the footsteps of the six Goswamis, Sri Rupa Sanatan, Bhata Raghunath, Sri Jiva, Gopal Bhatta, and Dasa Raghunath. All right, so Prabhupada makes some important points here in the beginning of the preface. He explains that this movement is conducted under the supervision of Srila Rupa Goswami. Right? This book, Upadesha Amrita, was written by Srila Rupa Goswami and it was based on the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
Actually, there's a description in the diary, one of Lord Chaitanya's, that Lord Chaitanya had a servant named Govinda, and he was residing during their time in Jagannath Puri. So Govinda had a diary and he kept note and he describes how one time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was uh, feeling great separation from Krishna, looking at the sea. You know, the sea at Jagannath Puri is a very dark blue colour, the same colour as the Yamuna. And also there are some hills there at Jagannath Puri, which remind Lord Chaitanya of Govardhan. And there are beautiful gardens also there, which are similar to the gardens which are found around Govardhan Hill. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, while he was staying in Jagannath Puri, he was feeling, you know, this, is, this place is actually Vrindavan, not different from Vrindavan. So he was feeling the separation from Lord Krishna. Naturally, he was thinking, where is Krishna? Because if this is Vrindavan, then Krishna's here, because Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although he was residing in Jagannath Puri, he was in this mood. As Prabhupada explains here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the mood of Srimati Radharani and she is the best of the gopis. So Lord Chaitanya had some intimate associates and among them there were people like Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. Rupa and Sanatan Goswami, they were given these names Rupa and Sanatan by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they are considered direct disciples of Lord Chaitanya. Rupa is the younger brother of Sanatan, but Rupa Goswami generally is considered the leader of the Goswamis of Vrindavan. The six Goswamis who had come there under the orders of Lord Chaitanya to reside in Vrindavan and to excavate the places of Lord Krishna's pastimes and to establish temples there and to also write books about the path of devotional service. So based on the books which Rupa Goswami wrote, he is considered to be the, the, the head of the Goswamis, the leader. So Prabhupada explains this Krishna consciousness movement is conducted under the supervision of Srila Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami was empowered by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to write books. We know two of the books, Prabhupada has given us two of the books of Rupa Goswami, namely this Upadesha Amrita or Nectar of Instruction and also the Nectar of Devotion, which is a summary study of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So Rupa Goswami, he is a very important devotee in the line of Lord Chaitanya. As Prabhupada explains, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, generally the Gaudiya Vaishnavas follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Goswamis, they follow Lord Chaitanya. Now there are some Vaishnavas who are not following Lord Chaitanya. And there are some people who follow Lord Chaitanya, but they don't all follow Rupa Goswami. But we follow Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami's position is very important. It is said in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, just like Krishna impregnated the heart of Brahma with the Vedic knowledge. Maybe you know that verse, Tenhe Brahma Ridayadi Kavaye. In the same way, Lord Chaitanya impregnated the heart of Rupa Goswami to write the Bhakti Shastras, particularly the, like this Upadesh Amrita and then Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. 
both of which are very important books describing the process of Bhakti Yoga. So Rupa Goswami's books had never been put in the English language before. It was Srila Prabhupada who introduced Rupa Goswami to the Western world. Of course, most people in the Western world had never heard of Krishna. And those who had heard of Krishna had never heard of Lord Chaitanya. And those who had heard of Lord Chaitanya, they'd never heard of Rupa Goswami. So Prabhupada introduced the Western world to not only Krishna and Lord Chaitanya, but also Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami, as Prabhupada said, the mission is conducted under Rupa Goswami. Meaning his teachings are very important for all the Vaishnavas. And Prabhupada quotes this song by Naratam Das that if we want to understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, we have to go through the books of the Goswamis, particularly Rupa and Raghunath. When we understand their teachings, then we will be able to understand the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. Right? Do you all want to understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna? Yes, yes Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, I'm sure we do. So, we have to go through Rupa Goswami. Rupa, Gosw Rupa, Rupa Goswami's position is very important because he got the direct teachings from Lord Chaitanya about how to understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. We have to follow in the footsteps. All right, so we'll go ahead. Somebody will ask somebody, some, one of the devotees you can read. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I continue? Yes, please. Sri Rupa Goswami was the leader of all the Goswamis and to guide our activities, he gave us this book, the Samrut, the nectar of instruction to follow. As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left behind him the eight verses known as Diksha, Diksha Ashtakam, Rupa Goswami gave us Upte Samrut so that we may become your Vaishnavas. All right, so that's the idea. We want to become pure Vaishnavas. <laughs> So the Lord Chaitanya, he gave us Shikshastikam and Rupa Goswami gave us this Upadesh Amrita. So it's very, very important books we're studying here, we're so fortunate. And the purpose of our studying them, that we can become pure Vaishnavas. Go ahead, someone. I can you Yes, please. In all spiritual affairs, one's first duty is to control his mind and senses. Unless one controls his mind and senses, one cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. Everyone within this material world is engrossed in the modes of passion and ignorance. One must promote himself to platform of goodness, Sattva Guna. By following the instructions of Rupa Goswami and then everything concerning how to make further progress will be revealed. Alright, so we can see Prabhupada is mentioning in all spiritual affairs one's first duty to control the mind and senses. This is not only for Bhakti Yoga, all other yoga systems, whatever spiritual line they're coming in, they have to control the mind and senses. And Prabhupada tells us why, right? Why? Why do we have to control the mind and senses? What happens if we don't control the mind and senses? Otherwise we cannot advance in uh, spiritual life. Why not? Because uh, if we don't control that, then our uh, the senses will, uh, senses uh, and mind will be wilder us and uh, we'll be drifting away from spiritual uh, things to material things and uh, get entangled with the maya. 
Yes. Then uh, mode of Pesan and ignorance uh, overpower that and uh, we cannot stay in a mode of goodness. Right. That's right. That's the point, right? We go into the mode of Rajagun and Tamagun and then we have, that's where the problems come. And as soon as we leave the mode of goodness, then we get all these problems. So we have to be very careful. Try to always control the mind and senses. All right, thank you. We'll ask somebody else to please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower. A follower of Krishna consciousness movement should become a perfect Goswami. Vaishnavas are generally known as Goswami. In Vrindavana, there is a little by which the director of each temple is known. One who wants to become a perfect devotee of Krishna must become a Goswami. Go means the senses and Swami means the master. Unless one controls his senses and mind, one cannot become a Goswami. To achieve the highest success in life by becoming a Goswami and then a pure devotee of the Lord, one must follow the instructions known as Upadeshamrit, which have been given by Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami has given many other books such as Bhakti Rasamrat Sindhu, uh, Vidaga Madhava and Lalita Madhava. But Upadeshamrit constitutes the first instructions for neophyte devotees. One should follow these instructions very strictly. Then it will be easier to make one's life successful. Hare Krishna. So Prabhu, what, what is... Uh, how do we make, a, 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 what's the key to advancement in Krishna consciousness? Uh, we have to, uh, like, uh, we have to uh, become the follower of uh, Srila Rupa Goswami. And uh, like, you know, we have to be perfect Goswami, that is what... Uh, what does Goswami mean? Goswami means one who controls, the, who is the master, means who can go means he has senses and uh, Swami means master. The one who can, who is mastered in controlling the senses is a Goswami. All right. So just like we had the first duty to control the mind and senses. So does it mean you have to become a Goswami? Does it mean you have to leave your job and leave your family? No, we have to control our mind and uh, like uh, whatever we do, we have to be in like the Shuddha Sattva Gun. That's what it is like, uh, controlling the mind and uh, always try to be in the uh, Krishna consciousness mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Krishna conscious mode. So Prabhupada mentions everything depends on the attitude of the follower, right? We, yes. have, we have to have the right attitude. So our attitude should be what? Our attitude should be to surrender to surrender to Krishna, right? Yes. Ma we want to surrender to Krishna. We want to use the, the senses and the mind in the service of Krishna. We want to please Krishna. We want to give pleasure to Krishna. Not, we don't just want to please our own mind and senses. We want to please Krishna. Put Krishna in the center. Right? The, so the attitude they must have the right attitude, devotional service. Devotional service they must be the, the mood of devotion to give service to Krishna. That we're doing it out of love. Because we, we, we want to feel more love and affection for Krishna. So the attitude, very important. You know, Kamsa's attitude, you know, Kamsa was thinking of Krishna, but he was thinking to kill Krishna. So his attitude was negative, but the devotee's attitude is positive. The devotee's thinking how to please Krishna, how to give pleasure to Krishna. All right. So Rupa Goswami's position and and very important for us as Gaudiya Vaishnavas that he is teaching all of us by his instructions how we can become Goswamis, what it means to be a Goswami, how to control, how to control the mind and senses. 
and Rupa Goswami is very much connected to Srila Prabhupada. Oh, they, they, we also point out, you know, Rupa Goswami, he is uh, very connected to Lord Chaitanya in his physical body, he's connected to Lord Chaitanya, but in his spiritual body, he's also connected to Krishna, right? Who is Rupa Goswami in his spiritual body? Does anybody know? Rupa Manjari. Yes, Rupa Manjari, right, Rupa Manjari. Manjari means the little girls who very young, they're very young and they assist in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. They're very intimate servants of Radha and Krishna because they're young girls, so they don't feel any envy. You know, if they're older girls, the older girls will feel jealous that, oh, this Radha, she's always with Krishna. So it, it's arranged that only the young girls will come there to serve Radha and Krishna. So Rupa Goswami, he is Rupa Manjari, and he's the head of the, all these young Manjari girls. He leads them in the service of Srimati Radharani. And Radharani, she's serving Krishna. She's the dear most servant of Krishna. And Rupa Goswami is serving her. So Rupa Goswami is very important to us. But nobody knew him. It was Srila Prabhupada who brought these books of Rupa Goswami. Just like this book, Upadesha Amrita. When Prabhupada wrote it, when we first saw it, all the devotees, we were thinking, oh, Prab it talks about Radha Kund, and we thought, oh, this book will not be for everybody. This book will just be for the senior devotees. So we thought it won't be for distribution. But Prabhupada said, no. And it, when they printed the book, they only wanted to print a small number of books. They said it will just be for the devotees. But Prabhupada said, no, why you print so few? He said, this is a book for mass distribution. He said, let everyone read it, and everyone can be benefited by hearing from Rupa Goswami. So Rupa Goswami, he is the founder of the, he is the, yeah, the central person in the Krishna consciousness movement after Lord Chaitanya. So it's important for us to hear from him. And Lord Chaitanya is guiding all of us. And Srila Prabhupada got a lot of inspiration from Rupa Goswami, right? How did Prabhupada get connection to Rupa Goswami? Anybody know? Because Rupa Goswami, he's from 500 years ago, he's, you know, from the times of Lord Chaitanya. So how could Prabhupada have connection to Rupa Goswami? Anyone? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, in the Radha Damodar temple, uh, Prabhupada used to describe the sa samadhi uh, of Rupa Goswami. This is a connection, Maharaj, every day. Yes, right. Prabhupada's room in the Radha Damodar temple is that t this Radha Damodar temple. At the back of the Radha Dhammada temple, there is the Bhajan Kutir and Samadhi of Rupa Goswami. So Prabhupada used to be there and he used to sit, he used to stay there and he wrote the first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam there and he got a lot of inspiration. He, was, he said, I was planning how I was going to attract all of you to come to Krishna consciousness. So he said, I got a lot of inspiration there. And it's said, it's also said that Rupa Goswami had appeared there to Prabhupada and Rupa Goswami had told him that you go to the West, you go to the West and you write your books, don't worry, I will be with you. You don't have to worry about anything, everything will be arranged, I will be there right with you. So don't you worry, go ahead and I'm coming with you. <laughs> so. Rupa Goswami had, like in his spiritual body, 
he had encouraged Prabhupada that you should go ahead, go to the West, get there, and begin Krishna consciousness movement, and I'm coming with you. So if Rupa Goswami was with him, then you don't have to worry about anything. Of course, Rupa Goswami, he is a Nitya Siddha devotee. He's a, a, a liberal, eternally perfect devotee. But that inspiration to go to the West, it came from Rupa Goswami and it came when Prabhupada was residing there at Radha Damodar Temple. Mm. Okay, so I, I, I'm just looking at the questions and the objectives, just make sure that we've covered everything. Right? Number, let's look at the questions. Under whose supervision is the Krishna Consciousness Movement conducted? Who will answer? Under Yes, under whose supervision? Rupa Goswami. All right. And what is one's first duty in all spiritual affairs? Someone? We have to understand the literature given by Goswamis and then be able to understand the transcendental loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. No, that is not the first duty in all spiritual. Controlling the mind and senses. Yes, controlling the mind and senses. Yes, that's the first duty, controlling the mind and senses. On what does our advancement in Krishna consciousness depend? Yes, someone answer? Attitude. Yes. Our attitude? Yes, attitude, right. All depends on having the right attitude, correct attitude. And define Goswami. Control the mind and senses. Yes. Controller of the mind and senses. Okay. We'll just have a look and see if we've covered all the uh, main points for this, for the preface. A brief overview of Sri Upadesh Amrita. All right, overview. I'll give the overview. We have eleven verses in this Upadesh Amrita. Right? How many chapters were in the Bhagavad Gita? How many mantras were in Ishopanishad? How many mantras were in Ishopanishad? Right. So we're lucky here. Upadesham Rita is short. Only eleven. Eleven verses. Actually it's something like the Manduka uh, but the, the, there's one Upanishad also, there's eleven mantras. Manduka Upanishad, I think. Eleven mantras. So an over overview of Upadesha Amrita. It's actually in your student handbook, but anyway, you can see the first few verses are giving Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, practicing according to rules and regulations, controlling the senses, like this. This goes on up to text number four, at least text number four is like that, and then uh, of course, text four, you've got loving exchanges. You've got the loving exchanges. We'll look at those things when we come to them. And then we come to here, after text four, text number five speaks about recognizing different levels of devotees or to know who to exchange, who to have the loving exchanges with. And text 6 tells about how, how we can associate with them, how to associate with the different levels of devotees, how should we deal with them according to their position. Then text 7 is about chanting the holy name. 
avoiding the anattas, avoiding the offences and trying, coming to chant the pure name. So the first seven verses are all describing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. And then going on text number eight, we come to Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti means spontaneous devotion to the Lord. So that's described in text number eight, how to practice Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. 24 hours a day. And then text 9 to 11 describe Baba Bhakti and Prima Bhakti. So you can see in this nectar of instruction, we cover the whole range of Bhakti Yoga, from Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti right up to Prima Bhakti. It's all here within this book. So very important and very powerful, and very good for us. So that's a brief overview of the Upadesha Amrita. And then the purpose of Sri Upadesha Amrita. Would anybody like to tell me what they think the purpose of the Upadesha Amrita is? Why did Rupa Goswami write this book? What's his purpose in mind? Anybody? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, uh, Maharaj uh, uh, the, the everyone to come to the level of Goswamis. Yes, that's one thing. He wants everyone to become controlled in their mind and senses like a Goswami. Uh huh. And is that all? And uh, to worship the Radha and Krishna. No. <laughs> well, I don't know. He mentions about worshipping Radha and Krishna, but he wants us to become pure devotees, yes. He wants us to develop pure love for Krishna, right? He wants us to have the right attitude, which is that we should be in the mood of servant of Krishna. We want to love Krishna. It's very important to develop the loving mood in the service of Krishna. So Rupa Goswami has written this book to guide us how to develop our love for Krishna. The purpose. The first that we will become Goswamis and then we will become devotees and then we will become pure devotees, develop our love, for pure love. So like that. And then the importance of Rupa Goswami and the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Well, Lord Chaitanya himself did not write any books, but he empowered the Goswamis to write books, particularly Rupa Goswami. Right? Lord Chaitanya met Rupa Goswami, first of all, they met at... Uh, well, they met first at a place called Ramakeli. Rupa and Sanatan were two brothers and they were working for the Mohammedan government previously. Before they joined Lord Chaitanya's movement, they were working for the Mohammedan government. But they, they gave up their work and they ran away. And Rupa Goswami met Lord Chaitanya at the, at the Prayag. At the Sangha, where the, where the Ganga and the Yamuna meet, at the Prayag. And Rupa Goswami was instructed by Lord Chaitanya for ten days in the science of bhakti. And based on the teachings which Lord Chaitanya gave him, Rupa Goswami wrote this book. Rupa Goswami had also heard about how Lord Chaitanya had spoken these things when he was in Jagannath Puri, when he was feeling separation from Krishna. So based on these teachings, Rupa Goswami wrote Upadesha Amrita. So we said, Lord Chaitanya, he empowered Rupa Goswami to write the books. Just like Krishna gave the Vedas to Brahma, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave this knowledge to Rupa Goswami the essence of the Vedas. 
Is it all right? Any questions so far? Explain how the Krishna consciousness movement is conducted under the move, under the supervision of Srila Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami is the leader of the Goswamis, right? And he is guiding all of us how to control our mind and senses, what should be the proper behavior. And discuss how study of Upadeshamrita could help to improve our attitude in Krishna consciousness. Yes, that we will, that we will learn how to properly behave, how to regulate our mind and senses, how to respect different devotees, and then how to chant the holy name, and how to go on to serve Krishna more, with more love and more intensity and devotion. So this will all be a big help to us in Krishna consciousness. All right, that's the preface. Any questions before we go on to the first verse? No questions? All right, somebody can read the Sanskrit for text number one. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, every, everyone to be repeated Maharaj? So. Everyone what? Everyone will be repeating, so I'll repeat one, one line I'll do. Yeah, that's nice, yeah. Vachu Vegam Manasa Krodha Vegam Vachu Vegam Manasa Krodha Vegam Jivha Vegam Uttha Uttha Vegam Translation by Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Yes. A person who can tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger, and the urges of the tongue, belly, and genitals is qualified to make disciples all over the world. Yes. Go, on, go. On. You can read the purport. Uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam 6.1.9 to 10, Parikshit Maharaj placed a number of intelligent questions before Sukadev Goswami. One of these questions was, why do people undergo atonement if they cannot control their senses? For instance, a thief may know perfectly well that he may be arrested for his stealing, but he may actually even see a thief arrested by the police, yet he continues to steal. Experience is gathered by hearing and seeing. One who is less intelligent gathers experience by seeing, and one who is more intelligent gathers experience by hearing. When an uh, intelligent person hears from the law books of Shastras or scriptures that stealing is not good, and hears that a thief is punished when arrested, he refrains from theft. A less intelligent person may first have to be arrested and punished for stealing to learn to stop stealing. However, a rascal, a foolish man, may have the experience of both hearing and seeing and may even be punished but still continues to steal. Even if such a person atones and is punished by the government, he will again commit theft as soon as he comes out of the jail. If punishment in jail is considered atonement, what is the benefit of such atonement? Thus Parikshit Maharaj inquired. Drashtra Srutabhyam Yatapapam Drashtra Srutabhyam Yatapapam Janam Api Atmanohitam Roti Bhuyo Vivasaha Prayashitam Atokatham Vachin Nivratati Bhadrata Vachit Charati Tatpuna Prayashitam Ato he compared atonement to an elephant parting. 
the elephant may take a nice, a very nice path in the river, but as soon as it comes out in the bank, it throws dirt all over its body. And when, is, uh, then what is the value of its bathing? Similarly, many spiritual practitioners chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and at the same time commit many forbidden things, thinking that their chanting will counteract their offenses. Of the ten types of offenses one can commit while chanting the holy name of the Lord, this offense is called Namno Balad Yatsya Hi Papa Buddhi, committing sinful activities on the strength of chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Similarly, certain Christians go to church to confess their sins, thinking that confessing their sins before the priest and performing some penance will relieve them from <coughs> the results of their weekly sins. As soon as Saturday is over and Sunday comes, they again begin their sinful activities, expecting to be forgiven the next Saturday. This kind of prayashitta or atonement is condemned by Parikshit Maharaj. <coughs> the most intelligent king of his time. Sukhdev Goswami equaled intelligent Sukhdev Goswami equally intelligent as befitting, befitting the spiritual master of Parikshit Maharaj answered the king that answered the king and confirmed that his statement concerning atonement was correct. A sinful activity cannot be counteracted by a pious activity. Thus real prashita atonement is the awakening of our dormant Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Yes. So Srila Prabhupada, beginning the purport here, is explaining to us how, because he mentioned the first thing is to control the mind and senses. So if our senses are not controlled, then we're going to do all kinds of things. We're going to engage in all kinds of activities. We don't know what's good and what's bad. Of course, Prabhupada explains that, that hearing is very important. Then a person hears carefully, he can learn by hearing. But not everybody is able to be benefited by hearing. Some people, don't, they never hear, so they don't know. They just do all bad things, nonsense things. So, doing atonement, how, you know, we do some bad thing, then what do you do to make up for it? What kind of atonement will, we, will we, people do? Not everybody is a devotee. So they will try to do atonement, just Prabhupada explains, maybe they go to the church, they go to the church, in the Catholic church especially, they have that tradition. They will go on the Saturday and they will tell the priest, oh I did this, oh I did that, oh I got angry, I, oh I did this, and I, oh I stole that. And then the priest will give some atonement to them, he will tell them to do something. Maybe they will tell them even, sometimes in the Catholic Church they chant, they have a, a thing, they have beads called a rosary, and they will chant on it, they chant a thing called Hail Mary. Hmm? They, they, they will chant the prayers to Mother Mary, who is the mother of the Church. And they say she's the mother of God. And so they, will, they have to chant, and they, the priest will tell them to chant. And sometimes in Hindu culture, people will do atonement. They will do maybe monavrat, no speaking, or maybe they'll do a charity, they'll give a charity, they'll give a donation for something, because they know they've done some bad things, so they want to make up for it, so they give some charity. So what's the problem with that kind of atonement? Who can say? What's wrong with that? The elephant path, um, Harash, like it's like elephant path, the yeah. elephant takes path into the pond and comes out and sprinkles mud again. Right, yes. Why? Uh, after cleaning the body, again it goes out and smears the dirt, dirt on its own body. So it's what is the use of that path. So similarly we chant, uh, we do whatever at the moment and again uh, start doing the same, the same things which for which we have done the atonement, so you know. Why? Yeah. Why did they do that though? Uh, so, Maharaj to like, uh, 
टू गेट रिड ऑफ दिस सिंस महाराज या बट व्हाई डिड दे गो ऑन एंड डू सिंस अगेन बिकॉज़ ऑफ द the mind and senses which are you know like not uh, under uh, the the control you know it again it re- again it reflects on the mind of that particular person that you know he has uh, and he is again uh, uh, more uh, attack satisfying his own senses yes what's going what's going on in the mind what's happening what's happening in the mind mind is to satisfy these senses right the mind has desire right mind has got yes. this desire he wants the mind is not the mind wants more it wants more it didn't get enough wants more so like that this is a problem because the, the desire the desire for sin is still there even though the man knows he got punished but still he thinks i'll do it again even though he knows it's wrong he will do it again he say oh, anyway I'll, i can do more atonement i can do more charity i will do more, more uh, i'll go to ganga and take bath i'll go to mayapur take a bath in the ganga get rid of all my sins so people are thinking like that they don't stop so the problem is What's the problem? Like continuously uh, becomes uh, we becomes uh, we are the instead of uh, being uh, dots of Krishna, we are dots of our senses. So you know we continuously attend to the uh, continuous desires of our. Yes, the desire for sin is still there. They didn't do anything. They didn't. They couldn't purify it. they couldn't take it they couldn't get rid of the desire for sin so what what is the process to get rid of the desire for sin what do they need to do uh actually like this we have to apply this principle this training principle which has been given that whole thing control all these six types of urges oh that would be very difficult Hi Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Awaken the love of God Krishna consciousness. Yes, we have to develop Krishna consciousness, right? We just simply have to take to Krishna consciousness. We can't train everybody to control the mind and senses, but it's very easy to give them Krishna consciousness. Let them chant Hari Krishna, take prasada, and they'll forget all about sins. when they chant and dance and hear the bhagavad gita study bhagavad gita see the deities then they become good they become good people and they forget about all the bad activities so this that is the best atonement that is the best way to get rid of the desire for sin by doing krishna consciousness will get rid of the desire for sin that only bhakti can do that no other process only the path of devotion will take away the desire for sin right okay we'll go ahead but see yeah we're on the part real atonement involves yes who can we'll have a marriage read Hi Krishna Maharaj real atonement involves coming to real knowledge and for this there is standard process when one follows a regulated hygienic process he does not fall sick a human being is meant to be trained according to certain principles to revive his original knowledge such a methodical life is described as tapasya one can be gradually elevated to the standard of real knowledge or krishna consciousness by practicing austerity and celibacy brahmacharya by controlling the mind by controlling the senses by giving up one's positions in charity by being avowedly truthful by keeping clean and by practicing yoga asana 
However, if one is fortunate enough to get the association of a pure devotee, he can easily surpass all the practices for controlling the mind by the mystic yoga process simply by following the regulative principles of Krishna consciousness. Refraining from illicit sex, meat eating, intoxication and gambling and by engaging in the service of the Supreme Lord under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master. This easy process is being recommended by Sri Rupa Goswami. Yes, we can see, you know, if we ask people to do all of these things, if Prabhupada had went to America and told everybody, I want you all to do austerity, I want you all to be brahmachari, I want you all to you know, give everything away in charity, <laughs> you know, all of these things, you know, who could do it? Nobody would do it, no, everybody would run away. But Prabh Prabhupada's program was simply give everybody Krishna consciousness, give them some chanting and gradually introduce the four regulative principles, you know, give people nice prasadam so they forget all about meat eating and they're chanting Hare Krishna and they forget all about taking drugs and intoxication and everything and we give people also a nice philosophy and so they don't gamble or anything like that. So they become very satisfied and peaceful by Krishna consciousness. So that is the value of association with the pure devotee. You get association with the devotees, people forget about all the sinful life. And they don't need to do all, the, all of the complicated things, for the, like mentioned here, for the mystic yoga. Alright? Is it clear? Yes, yes Maharaj. Yes. Okay, we'll go ahead. Another lady can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. First one must control his speaking power. Everyone of us has the power of speech. As soon as we get an opportunity, we begin to speak. If we do not speak about Krishna consciousness, we speak about all sorts of nonsense. A toad in a field speaks by croaking and similarly everyone who has a tongue wants to speak even if all he has to say is nonsense. The croaking of the toad, however, simply invites the snake, please come here and eat me. Nevertheless, although it is inviting death, the toad goes on croaking. The talking of materialistic men and impersonalist Mayavadi philosophers may be compared to the croaking of frogs. They are always speaking nonsense and thus inviting death to catch them. Controlling speech, however, does not mean self-imposed silence, the external process of mona, as Mayavadi philosophers think. Silence may appear helpful for some time, but ultimately it proves a failure. The meaning of controlled speech conveyed by Srila Rupa Goswami advocates the positive process of Krishna Katha, engaging the speaking process in glorifying the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. The tongue can thus glorify the name, form, qualities and pastimes of the Lord. The preacher of Krishna Katha is always beyond the clutches of death. This is the significance of controlling the urge to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Maharaji. So, you know, so how, how do the Mayavadis control the urge to speak? By uh, keeping mona, mon. Right, mon, right. Can you do mon? No, Mayavadis. <laughs> <laughs> mon, but not for long. Yeah. Difficult for people to do. Some people do it, they go away, go away in the world, go and sit in a, in a cave or go and sit in the forest or they just go and sit, they lock the door and stay in the room, don't speak to anybody. But that's not going to solve. What's the problem with that? What's the problem with that process? Why should, you know, well, Prabhupada said, he said, maybe, it, uh, no? it, proves, it proves a failure, Maharaj, because we cannot be mourned for a longer time. Only for some time uh, we can keep mourned. 
Yeah, Prabhupada said, may appear helpful for some time, but ultimately, just like in Vrindavan, there was this one temple and they had this one man, he was going to begin the monovrat, he was going, they said he's going to do monovrat for a year, you know, so for one year he was not going to speak, but after one year he was going to speak. <laughs> and what, what's he going to do for one year? He's going to use a blackboard, he's got a board and chalk and he just writes everything he wants to say on the board. So they do like that. So although not speaking, the mind is still speaking. The mind is speaking and the hands are speaking, there's writing, you know, and so like that. So that's not really silence. Prabhupada said, you know what Prabhupada said, the sound of silence is? He said, chanting Hare Krishna. He said, that is the sound of silence. <laughs> the chanting of Hare Krishna, that is real silence. So, then Prabhupada gives an example about the toads in the fields, they're croaking. <coughs> and what's happening? What? They are inviting death, sir. Yeah. Who's going to get them? Snake. The snakes will come, right? The snakes hear the sound, they will come and eat the, tw eat the frogs. They're happy. The frogs are so stupid, they're saying, here I am, come and eat me, and the snake will come. So we're the same. We're talking, talking nonsense, and we're reducing the duration of life. As we talk, the more we talk nonsense, the more we reduce our duration of life. We say nonsense talk will breed nonsense thought. And from nonsense thought comes nonsense action. And from nonsense action, then you get old age, disease and death. You have to take birth again in the material world. So the urge, the very first thing Rupa Goswami spoke about, vacho vegam, the urge to speak. We have to control the urge to speak. So Rupa Goswami says, the meaning is uh, Krishna Kata. We have to, this is the part process. That we don't say it's simply silence, but we say speak about Krishna. Use the words to glorify Krishna. Then there's no harm. Just keep chanting Hare Krishna and sing the songs about Krishna and chant the glories of Krishna. Then there's no problem. All right, we'll go ahead. We'll come back, ask some men to read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Go ahead. Yes. Similarly, anger can be controlled. The restlessness or fickleness of the mind in uh, Manovega is controlled. No, no, by one kind no, no. Of mind. No, similarly, oh, 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 right, yeah, yeah, the restless, okay, up there, right, yeah, we're doing the mind, right. So we yeah. did the urge to speak, now the mind's demands. Okay, go ahead, Prabhu. Yeah. The restlessness or fickleness of the mind, that is Manovega, is controlled when one can fix his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. The Chaitanya Chattamrita, Madhya Lila, 22.31 says, Krishna Surya Sama Maya Haya Andhakara, Yahaha Krishna Taha Nahi Maya Yara Adhikara. Krishna is just like the sun and the Maya is just like darkness. If the sun is present, there is no question of darkness. Similarly, if Krishna is present in the mind, there is no possibility of the mind's being agitated by Maya influence. The yogic process of negating all material thoughts will not help. To try to create a welcome in the mind is artificial. The welcome will not remain. However, we can always think of Krishna and how to Krishna which one mind will naturally be controlled. Okay. So control, controlling the mind. How to control the mind? Mind is... Thinking about Krishna, always thinking about Krishna, we can control everything. Arjun? Always 
Arjuna said it was very difficult in Bhagavad Gita, right? Chanchalahi mana Krishna. Arjuna said, my mind is restless, more difficult to control than the wind, right? Yes. So, how to control the mind? <laughs> yeah, Krishna said, yeah, I know it's difficult, right? But by constant practice and by detachment it's possible. So, is that also the process in Krishna Consciousness? And engage in devotional service. Yeah, we have to be also proper, proper engagement. So Prabhupada talks about trying to make the mind blank, to create a vacuum in the mind. He says artificial, to make the mind empty. How long can you make the mind empty for? Very soon something will come in. We can sit for one minute, two minutes, the mind blank, but something will come in the mind because it's the nature of the mind. So we have to learn how to use the mind for Krishna. We should think about how to serve Krishna and how to, how to expand the Krishna consciousness movement. Maybe you have to think somebody's cooking for Krishna, so we think about what nice preparation I could cook for Krishna. Maybe you're making the flower garland for Krishna, you can think how to make a nice flower garland. Like this, we keep our mind busy in service for Krishna. So this is important, this is very good. Keep the mind, this is not material. If we're always thinking how to serve Krishna, this is spiritual. Prabhupada quotes Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna is the sun, Maya is darkness. So if we keep the mood of always serving Krishna, then we'll always be in the sun, we'll be away from the darkness. All right, go ahead. Would you like to keep reading Prabhu? Yeah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Similarly, anger can be controlled. We cannot stop anger altogether, but if we some, simply become angry with those who blaspheme the Lord or the devotees of the Lord, we control our anger in Krishna consciousness. We, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became angry with the miscreant brothers Jaha and Mahathai, who blasphemed and struck Nityananda Prabhu. Uh, in his Sikshashtaka, Lord Chaitanya wrote, Trunathapi Suni Sena Karo Rapi Sahi Shruna. One should be humbler than the grass and more tolerant than the tree. One may then ask why the Lord exhibited his anger. The point is that one should be really ready to tolerate all insults to one's own self. But when Krishna or his fever devotees blossom, a genuine devotee becomes angry and acts like fire against the offenders. Krodha or, or anger cannot be stopped, but it can be applied rightly. It was in anger that Hanuman set fire to Nanga, but he is worshipping the great, greatest devotee of Lord Ramachandra. This means that he utilized his anger in the right way. Arjuna serves as another example. He was not willing to fight, but Krishna incited his anger, we must fight. To fight without anger is not possible. Anger is controlled, however, when you utilize to the service of the Lord. All right. We have to be very careful using anger in the service of the Lord. It means we have to be, you have to be controller of the mind and senses. If we're not in control, then we will use the anger in the wrong way. It can become a problem. So you have to be a little careful about this. What we think we're doing in the service of Krishna, are we really doing it for Krishna or is it just for our own ego when we become angry? So we have to be careful, right? Now Prabhupada talks about using anger in the service of the Lord. He said uh, when somebody may blaspheme the Lord or his devotees, so we could get angry at them. But if we hear, you know, if we hear this kind of thing, it said, actually said, you should cut out the tongue of the offender. 
But we don't want to cut out that that's, that'd be very, that would be a crime if you cut out somebody's tongue. What we should do, what should we do? Somebody is saying bad things about Krishna or about the devotees. What we should go away from that place from our knowledge. Right, I think so. I think you're, we're better. We go away from that place. Cover our ears and go away. We don't want to hear these kind of words. Very offensive. Unless we have control, unless we, yeah, and unless we are really in a superior position that we can really give instruction to the people who are being offensive, then better just to go away. Be careful about trying to use anger in the service of Krishna. Because we know in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said three gates to hell, right? What are the three gates to hell? Anger, lust, lust, and greed. Greed, right. Greed. Mm, right. Greed. So we have to be careful. And, and also earlier in Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, Krishna had described how we fall down. Right? You know the meaning? Uh, by contemplating on uh, uh, sense objects, yes, uh, desire desire arises, and then because of desire, uh, uh, when desire is not fulfilled, then krodha uh, anger will come. Yes, right. No. When but anger comes, your intelligence uh, intelligence will be is right. And yeah, intelligence is lost. So we have to be very careful not to let that happen. Right. Yes, Maharaj. So Prabhupada gives examples of people who used anger. Uh, Hanuman yeah. um, uh, putting fire on the Lanka, Ravana's Lanka. Right. And one more. Uh, uh, Nityananda Prabhu on Jagan Madai. Nityananda didn't get angry. Oh, sorry. Um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got yeah, angry. Yes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got angry, right? <laughs> yeah. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to kill them, right? Yes, he was right. calling for his Sudarshan Chakra. But Lord, uh -huh. what did Lord Nichananda say? Uh, to leave them. Why? Um... Because he's very merciful. Yes. Lord Nichananda, what did Lord Nichananda say? He said that in this age we have to be merciful. Right? Mm. Why? Uh, don't know much. Because there's so many demons. We can't kill them all. You can't just go around killing all the demons wholesale, right? Yeah. Yes, Master. So we have to be merciful in this age. We have to make the demons devotees. Very good. Mm. So if, if and, you know, we have to be very careful about trying to use anger in the service of Krishna. Mm. Be careful. You know, with, you maybe you get angry with your children or something like that. Be careful. Not good. We don't allow it. You have to control the anger. If the children upset you, take your japa beads and go out and go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> don't get angry. Don't waste. Don't show your anger. You have to show control and talk to them and appeal to them that this behavior is not proper, you have to stop this. It will be much more effective. Right? So, we have to show the example. So, using anger, be careful, it's, it's a fun, very delicate thing to use anger in the service of Krishna. 
Okay, we'll go ahead. Next one, the topic is the tongue, the urge of the tongue. Again, not speaking, but other things. As for the urges of the tongue, we all experience that the tongue wants to eat the panical conditions. Generally, we, we should not allow the tongue to eat according to the choice, but should control the tongue by supplying prasadam. The devotee's attitude is that he will eat only when Krishna gives him prasadam. That is a way to control the urge of the tongue. One should take prasada at Shatun two times and should not eat in restaurants or street meat shops simply to satisfy the limbs of the tanga of belly. If we stick to the principle of taking only prasada, the urges of the belly and the tongue can be controlled. Oh, okay. So some practical instructions given here. <laughs> Don't eat in the restaurants or sweetmeat shops. <laughs> Right? What does that mean? The, maybe that means we go to the... We, does that mean we go to the sweet meat shop and we buy it and take it home and eat it, right? <laughs> after offering Krishna, maybe. Oh, after offering to Krishna, maybe. Best thing is you make your own sweets. You buy, buy sweet in the sweet meat shop. You don't know who's cooked it. You don't know what dirty fellow cooked it. You don't know what standard of hygiene they have. Anyway, you have to be careful. Eating in restaurants, you know, may look very nice. You don't know in the kitchen what goes on. What they're using, how they're cooking. They may say, oh, vegetarian, oh yeah, no problem. We can give you vegetarian. They cook it in the same pot, they cook meat, or they cooked it with the onions or something. So, best thing is you eat at home. You go out to the restaurants and sweet meat shops. It's not very good, very risky. Just like nowadays, this COVID, people are more careful about going out. And so, that disease is always there. So, devotees, we don't like to eat in these places. I heard from Prabhupada, I remember Prabhupada telling us in Mayapur, we'd all, devotees had all come from the West and Prabhupada said, he saw them all there and he said, please, you are all devotees, do not eat in the restaurants. I remember Prabhupada telling us, he didn't like it. So, it's control of the tongue. Prasadam, it should be offered to Krishna. Um, so Prabhupada said, this is the control of the tongue. You take prasadam. What about in the aeroplane? Do you take the food in the aeroplane? Only fruits. You should be careful. Prabhu, Prabhupada said, when, like when we would go door to door to meet people, he said, don't take any cut fruit. He said, it should be uncut. They give you fruit, it should be uncut. Why? Because if it's cut, you don't know what they've cut it with. They use the same knife, they cut the meat. You should be careful. You take cut fruit, even if you take fruits, you can take some uncut fruit, but don't just take things which people have all been cutting and handling, not recommended. These are some instructions from Prabhupada, what he wanted. Okay, we'll go ahead in a similar manner. Krishna Maharaj? Yes? In a similar manner, the urges of the janitors 
the sex impulse can be controlled and not used unnecessarily. The genitals should be used to beget a Krishna conscious child. Otherwise, they should not be used. The Krishna consciousness movement encourages marriage not for the satisfaction of the genitals, but for the begetting of Krishna conscious children. As soon as the children are a little grown up, they are sent to our Gurukul school, where they are trained to become fully Krishna conscious devotees. Many such Krishna conscious children are required, and one who is capable of bringing forth Krishna conscious offspring is allowed to utilize his genitals. Hare Krishna. All right. So, you know, in some, pl some parts of the world they have restrictions about how many children you can have. But in, in Krishna consciousness we don't have any restrictions. We don't mind if you have many children. We just want that they will all be devotees. That's all. Bring them up to be nice devotees. So that's the real purpose of having children. That mother and father should think that this child who is going to take our birth, this child, that this will be the last birth in the world and they'll go back to Godhead after this life. So mother and father should think like that, that we want a very nice pure soul to come in the womb and this child will not have to take birth again. This will be the last birth. Let them go back to Godhead. So mother and father should think like that. So marriage is good. We, we encourage people get married and we encourage people have children. But we want quality children, good children. And to get good children, you have to conceive the children in, according to religious principles. And then you attract a good soul. So you do the samskar, you do Garbhadan samskar, chant Hare Krishna nicely and then you will attract a nice pure soul who will be a good devotee. All right? Yes, sir. Prabhupada had five children. Prabhupada had been married in his family life. He had five children and he tried his best to bring them up to be devotees. Now, of course, it's ultimately it's up to the children. They may become devotees, they may not. We know Bhaktivinoda Thakur, I think he had 11 children. And he raised all of them to be devotees. Okay, go ahead. When one is fully practiced in the methods of Krishna conscious control, he can become qualified to be a bona fide spiritual master. Go ahead. In his Anuvriti explanation of Upadeshamrita, Srila Bhakti Siddha Saraswati Thakura writes that our material identification creates three kinds of urges. The urge to speak, the urge or demands of the mind and the demands of the body. When a living entity falls victim of these three types of urges, his life becomes inauspicious. One who practices resisting these demands or urges is called tapasvi or one who practices austerities. By such tapasya, one can overcome victimization by the material energy, the external potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we all get trouble with the material energy. How to overcome the material energy? We have to do this tapasya. We have to practice this austerity, controlling these urges, speaking. How to speak? How to, how to control the urge to speak? What are you going to do, Manaji, to control your urge to speak? How can you control it? Uh, uh, Maharaj, by sp uh, only speaking about the Lord, His form, His qualities and His pastimes, we can control our speak and mm. not uh, just uh, doing some mundane uh, speak, like uh, chatting something wrong, only about Krishna. No, you should only speak what is necessary, right? You should only speak what is absolutely necessary. That's the problem, that, that we, we often speak so many, but what happens, we start to speak about people. We speak about other people, that's, and then we commit offenses. We start criticizing them, so it's very dangerous. 
So I have to be very careful to control the urge to speak. And so we try to speak only what is necessary. Otherwise, we, of course, we speak about Krishna, right? Yes. Yes, Maharaj. And what about the demands of the belly? How much are you going to eat? As much as required, Maharaj. Only Krishna Prashad. Yeah, what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to take water before the meal, right? Yes, yes, Maharaj. How much food? Are you supposed to just put food in the belly or are we allowed... No, we have to put also liquid in the belly. You should drink water like a half an hour before the meal. You should take some water so that you will not eat so much. Okay. Because after the meal you don't want to take water because that would put out the fire of digestion. Uh, okay. But you take the water before the meal. This should be one-third food, one-third th one liquid, one-third air. We don't just fill the belly, right? Keep some room for the air and then the food can digest better. Maharaj, it is also said that you should eat food, not stomach full, but your F. stomach should be a little half empty also. Is it right? Well, well, not half empty, but I, I had like one-third food, one-third liquid, and one-third air. Okay. Something like that. You have to have some solid food, and you have also liquid, and then you have some air. Okay, Maharaj. That's... And the, and the best time to eat is in the middle of the day. You try to eat less at night. Yeah. Eat a good meal in the morning and eat yeah. a full meal at lunchtime and eat less at night. Okay. Because at night there's no digestion there. Right. And when if you eat if you eat things at night, then you won't have a good sleep. You won't be able to sleep properly. Right. So they say it's also very good for health. Now Prabhupada told us, no grains after four o'clock in the afternoon. Means no rice, no chapatis after four o'clock. Yeah, my rice. So it means if you're going to eat at night, you take something light only. Yes? Yes, my rice. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Okay, where are we? When we refer to the earth? Who's going to read? Krishna Maharaj. Haribo Prabhu. When we refer to the urge to speak, we refer to useless talking such as that of impersonal Mayavadi philosophers or of persons engaged in fruitive activities, technically called karmakanda, or of the materialistic people who simply want to enjoy life without restriction. All, of, all such talks or literatures are practical ex exhibitions of the urge, of urge to speak. Many people are talking nonsensically and writing volumes of useless books. And all this is the result of the urge to speak. To counteract this tendency, we have to divert our talking to the subject of Krishna. This is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5 to 10 to 11. Nayat vachas chitra padam harer yasho jagat pavitram pragnita karchit those words which do not describe the glories of the Lord, who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe, are considered by saintly persons to be like unto a place of pilgrimage for cross, since all the perfect persons are 
inhabitants of the transcendental abode, they do not derive any pleasure there. Maharaj, continue. Yeah, go ahead. Just that next sloka. Tadvag Vishargo Janataga Viplavo Yasmin Pratishit Slokam Abadva Tvate Api Namanya Anantasya Yesho Nikanti Niyad Spravanti Gayanti Grananti Sadhava. On the other hand, that literature which is full of description of the transcendental glories of the name.